a second. Right. So uh, thank you for joining in today. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but but uh, this is an opportunity for you to meet with the top management of each school. Keep your options open to a few private design and fashion schools that you should be considering for your admissions in 2022. And save money by applying only to a few schools, right? Uh, we don't want you to be applying to so many schools and then kind of wondering which school you should be considering. Uh, so of course, we've been doing the series of e-meet your design and fashion schools with a lot of uh, good schools across India. Um, and for you to understand a little more about the schools that you should be considering in 2022, we've done a webinar. Um, earlier this year and the link is here so you all can watch this um this the the link to this deck has been shared with all the parents of students uh, parents and students of dq labs and if you need to get this link please reach out to our counseling team a lot of these schools would like you to submit your portfolio so we have created another webinar for you you know on how you can create your portfolio, some guidelines that would help you out. Uh, today's session is with ISDI Mumbai or Indian School of Design and Innovation Mumbai, which is part of Atlas University. Uh, if you'd like to get more information of, of the school, I'll be sharing the DQ Edge link uh, to ISDI. And if you'd like to apply to ISDI, the form link will also be shared with you in the chat if you're attending on Zoom. And for those of you who are attending on YouTube, the same information is there in the description of this YouTube channel. Professor Bulbul Chowdhury has come here. She's taken the time out to come here and interact with each one of you today. Uh, now, Professor Bulbul is a very dynamic um, leader and one of the top management of ISDI and you know I've been in touch with her for many years and I, I, I definitely think that um, personally she's so involved with ISDI and there's so much that we can learn from her and and more importantly when you talk to her you really understand why uh, ISDI is is a school that's to be considered and uh, Bulbul thank you so much for coming in today like I said, uh, Dion, pleasure is entirely ours, and thank you so much for having us here today. Sure, sure. So, um, what I'd like to do now is give you uh, the screen sharing. I'll just activate that just a second. Uh, and let me stop sharing my screen, and you can take it from here. Yeah, thank you, sir. So I think what I'm going to do, um, Dion, is allow me to uh, share a small video of a fantastic, wonderful campus here in Mumbai, and after which I will have a presentation and happy to interact and answer questions thereafter. So I have this uh, over five minutes video, but it's worth every minute of it. Let's let's watch this. Yeah, I'm actually keen on uh, having a look at the new campus because I haven't been there. And, uh, and I'm keen on watching this, so this is interesting, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, if we don't have the sound. that building you're like that's is the that's us there's something about the vibe of this place like i love the open space i love nature and it's like a completely different world it's just a treat for visual creators 
A design school is a happy place. And uh, happy is a man who makes a living out of his hobby. It's a very beautiful culture that we have uh, set at the school. And you'll find the senior students also very warmly welcoming and mentoring the younger ones. Nature with the people, with the conversations, and the passion for the same thing is like a lot of energy over here. the big moment of us, uh, we've been online, on Zoom, now suddenly we are coming back and expressing ourselves as groups of people who can physically work together to create things. Design teaches you to be free and let's sets you off and once you are on this journey at some point it pulls you back. How do you then therefore create your imagination in a context which is a working live physical service or a solution? It's about getting them to understand what a technical instrument or a process might be able to do for them if they just apply their imagination to it and try to adapt it to a different situation. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use because you can't stop it from shining through. It's true. Today, industry finds a lot of gap in the ability of a student to use technology. We introduce technology to the students and remove any fear that they might have of it by breaking it down into easily digestible smaller chunks and everything is interlinked. So in one course you start thinking, in another you start making based on the thinking. Learning every day how to work in a team, how to um, you know manage people, how to listen to people, how to understand people. The idea of collaboration is the key because you know that is the way forward for any and every design department or domain, right? Because uh, you need to work together, you need to ideate together, you need to learn to make things together, right? I just wanna be happy, happy what we celebrate is diversity. So the idea is to get students from across the country, possibly across the globe, to come and study together. I'm actually from Gujarat. I'm from Bangalore, but I'm super excited to ship to Bombay now. Love this city. We've built the curriculum in such a manner that Mumbai city becomes the experience lab for them. We focus a lot on uh, student development programs. We focus on pastoral care. Uh, we take care of a lot of uh, student well-being. So we do things that create impact, changing the world one smile at a time. Uh, we collaborate with NGOs, we do social media programs to raise awareness on certain topics. There are so many things that I want to do. I go up and I look at the library and I think about how we could sit here and read. And I look at the turf and I think that I want to play on. Wanna be happy, happy
finally when they are out in the industry uh, and when you get feedbacks from the industry mentors saying that your kids are good they are doing very well and they have got people whom they were looking for and with the right skill set and attitude that's what the differential is with our students they've had so much industry experience from the first day at isd and the first year at atlas going forward that they're ready to take on any kind of challenge we believe that every student that we are working with now is going to be relevant in 2075 and beyond every single child who comes into the university and get them to really harness their potential much beyond they even imagined it's a proven track record there's a future here that is bright now i'm just super excited to like start the rest of the year and actually live and breathe on this campus is like people want to be here that uh, dion was our uh, absolutely brand new campus in bandra kurla complex here in bombay and uh, since you are in bangalore this is the closest we can bring the campus to you i'm not sure if you saw some of your students here though quite a few from bangalore on this uh, in this presentation i did i did see a couple of them yeah. did, right? <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to now run a presentation uh, which uh, is fairly comprehensive and it will give you uh, a sneak peek into life at SD, the programs that we offer, uh, the curriculum, pedagogy, student life, and all of it. And I'll try and be fairly quick. So many of us, uh, many of you already know us as SD, and we are here in Mumbai. Uh, we've been offering. This is possibly our eleventh, twelfth year, and uh, we've been offering the programs of Parsons here in India. The other word which is synonymous with SD now is uh, the university that we are. We are Atlas, uh, and this is a skill tech university. We are a state private university, and the degree or the bachelor's in design degree is offered by Atlas Skill Tech University. Uh, now the university has, of course, today I'm going to really talk about the design school or ISD as you know it. But the other schools of the university are that we are also a school of business. We are a school for media and communication. We are a fantastic. I don't know how many of you know, but we have this absolutely brilliant school of film and animation. Uh, and just as at ISD, we offer the programs of Parsons in India. Uh, in the film school, we offer the programs of Vancouver Film School uh, here in India. with pathways in film production as well as in animation and of course our latest and uh, the new school that we've launched this year is our school of digital technology that offers programs in artificial intelligence and machine learning now i'm mindful that everyone who's listening in today is really here for design and so i'm going to restrict my conversation to talking about the design school of atlas which is isd uh, we've already talked about parsons and uh, well parsons has been consistently ranked as the world's Uh, possibly number one, two, or the, amongst the top three schools uh, of the of the world, and our partnership with Parsons allows the students not just to get the certification from Parsons, study the Parsons curriculum here in India, uh, but also or possibly exercise the opportunity to study part of the program here in India, and also look at various kinds of exchange opportunities. <laughs> or even transfer opportunities uh, to parsons and yes many of our students on completion of four years here in india have considered parsons as a university of choice to study masters in uh go past the picture of the convocation ceremony in well what is called pre covid times uh, so this is one of those now let's talk a little bit about our campus and the programs uh, that we offer we i've already said we are here in mumbai uh, we offer okay well look okay, at the slides in mumbai never sleeps and i think it's an amazing city to be in uh, it's a truly truly cosmopolitan city uh, brings in 
uh, you know, there's a stage in life, uh, Dion, when you're graduating from high school to professional career through this professional journey or professional studies, as they call it. And I think there's some incredible cities in this country where you can be to go through this transition from high school to a professional career. Uh, for me, Mumbai is definitely that one of those cities. It's a, it's a wonderful mix of film, television, production, banking, finance, events, all things creative. And in, in many ways, it is a laboratory of sorts. And I think I can't possibly think of ISD in any other city, uh, but here in Mumbai. Personally, I found the city very rewarding. Uh, uh, professionally, it's extremely exciting for young people. A great city to grow in. And of course, a very safe city to be in. And I'm not sure if, uh, where the students are joining from, but this year is remarkable because other than Bombay and then Pune, the largest number of students who have applied to ISD this year happen to be from Bangalore, which is, which is very interesting for us. Um, the programs, of course, these are a couple of pictures from the campus, but I'm not going to spend so much, too much time because many of you have seen the videos and we are, well, Mumbai is a corporate hub of sorts. There is this little joke that goes that Delhi is the capital, but Mumbai is where the capital is. And well, a lot of uh, the creative companies, retail companies, real estate majors, consulting firms and technology, and I'm talking about technology and consulting in a design presentation because they've become big hirers for design students are all headquartered in the vicinity of our campus. Uh, well, we, we can skip this for now. Okay, now let's talk about the programs that we offer. Uh, there are seven undergraduate programs that uh, we offer, but before that, let's talk a little bit about the kind of a university that we are. And on many occasions, I've had students and parents ask, how is Atlas and ISD as part of Atlas a different kind of a university? And I think uh, my answer to that is for the longest time in India, we had standalone schools, right? Whether it was the IIT, whether it was All India Institute of Medical Sciences to offer medicine, whether it was the Indian Statistical Institution or the Indian Institute of Science. That I think is transitioning from single disciplines uh, to a multidisciplinary disciplinary approach because now young people will require different kinds of intelligences to apply to solving a problem. And I think that is where the celebration of interdisciplinarity or transdisciplinarity comes in. And to me, this is very interesting because even if you are studying and you're very clear that you're studying design, but you do want to understand what is the kind of intelligence that you'd like to imbibe if you were to study a little bit of artificial intelligence or machine learning uh, or possibly filmmaking. And, and to really celebrate this breadth that a university can offer as against a standalone school is really, in my opinion, the future of not just design, but various other educational formats. And that's really what you should expect at Atlas, uh, a breadth of various kinds of intelligences that come through the different schools that we are. Uh, the seven programs that we offer are right here, <laughs> which is uh, communication design, fashion design, interior design, product design, or often called industrial design. Uh, fashion, luxury, and lifestyle, strategic design management, which is a very unusual uh, program because it's not offered by many uh, in India, which is a combination, as the word suggests, of design, strategy, and business and management. And the seventh course is the fashion communication and styling programs. And often students may not be altogether certain about the choice that they wish to pursue. And therefore, it may be a good idea to actually make a definite choice about your specialization only after you've completed the first year. And that flexibility exists. So you finish the first year and then you take a decision on, hey, I want to do this or that. Uh, well, again, I'm going to take just about a few seconds on this slide. And I was talking about uh, interdisciplinary or a transdisciplinary approach to education. And one of the ways in which it will happen for you is while studying in the design school, you have the choice, or the students have the choice to pick up an elective in something as diverse as entrepreneurship or startup incubation or e-commerce or trading and programming or even in finance. And I think real life is, is made of all of this, right? I mean, our lives are a confluence of business and data and analytics and fintech and media and technology. And so really this is a celebration of all of these things. And over the four years while you study at ISD, uh, I invite you to look at my, many of these um, electives uh, to study. 
Uh, okay, now very quickly, uh, the yellow band maybe is the first one. I will cover the last one first, or I could cover the first one first, which is the pedagogy. So we talked briefly about our first year, which is that it is a celebration of liberal arts and the breadth. Students are exposed to a wide array of specializations, but not just that, right? You There are subjects that are very important to, to sort of imbibe right in the beginning, whether it is sustainability, you can't make something and they say, hey, like, let's make it sustainable, by the way, right? Because we did a module on sustainability at some point. You To think of sustainability right from the very start, from the very first decision about the material that you choose to make a product, is it recyclable or am I going to use a pre-recycled material? And if that is the case, then in many ways, the material itself besides the design you will end up with not the other way around. And so sustainability, about uh, creativity, imaging, um, looking at subjects like research, reading, much of which sometimes we may have left doing for a bit is we revisit all of that, which really makes you the person you want to become. And I've always said this, Dion, that when you're 17, you have an array of options in front of you. You could be a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, or a designer. Uh, and you will pick up skills that will get you a vocation or an employment or a career and get you know a, a job or all of that. But you also want to become a complete person, right? The person you will become, the thinking individual, the person who wants to solve uh, and make the world a better place, not just for yourself, but for everyone. And you will do it through your skill. But there's so many other op op abilities that need to be developed by the side, your ability to have independent thinking, your ability to be able to write well, research well, pick up the right problems you want to solve. And, and that is the wonder of the first year, which is the foundation year. So it's not just picking up skills, but it's also really becoming a complete enlightened individual and a real change in your consciousness from, from, uh, you know, an from a person to an enlightened being, I would say. Of course, in the second, the third, and the fourth year, you go through your specializations. And I did talk about the seven specializations that we just presented a while back. International is very exciting. And personally, I believe that some amount of international exposure is very useful in, in, in adding a certain dimension to your life and your experience. Uh, in many ways, it is also important because you realize just how much India as a country has to offer to the rest of the world. You know, And international not doesn't always mean going abroad, but it also means celebrating internationalization in India there will be opportunities for students to look at semester exchange opportunities where you could go and spend about six months to even up to one year in a partner university outside. And likewise, we also receive many, many students. Maybe if there are questions on international towards the end, I will take them more specifically, but that's an array of uh, different kinds of international opportunities uh, in, in Europe, in UK, in US, uh, and possibly now even Australia for students to be able to exercise. But remember, this is as much for having international students come to India as for our students to get an international exposure. And the last band, which is the yellow band and very exciting, uh, and this is really where we leverage Bombay to our advantage, is that over four years, all of the students have three internships and one capstone opportunity to go back to the industry and really come as close to real life as possible. So it's not that you go through a four years program and then sort of you're hit by what real life is. All of these four years, you keep going to the industry and imbibe and really look at the parallels between what you're learning in the college and what you're what the industry has to offer and how you will uh, become part of it. So this is really uh, what I've already talked about, which is the four stages in which uh, you have, an, students have an opportunity or the learners have an opportunity to go back to the industry. So the four tiered uh, uh, structure is starting with an observership leading to an apprenticeship internship, a, a more structured and a more sophisticated capstone project, and finally the final placement. And I think another graphic representation is in the next slide for Aishwarya Kulkarni, so started as a communication design student, her first uh, observership at DDB Mudra, which is a very large uh, advertising major. Then she went to Leaf Design, which does some very select work in uh, communication design, VML for marketing and communication, which is an internship, a capstone for a, a skincare company. And finally, she's still, uh, now she's about two years and she's working at PCS. So every student will have a journey such as this. I'm just re representing Aishwarya as someone who represents the entire class, but that's the journey. 
uh, faculty, uh, that's another question that I get asked often. And there are two types of faculty that you should <clears throat> expect in a university like Atlas and a school like ISD, which is, <clears throat> so there are the, uh, <clears throat> There are the teaching faculty with, who come with extensive experience in having worked in the industry. You can see some of the organizations that they've all extensively worked in. So they can bring a real life experience to what is it to work in Philips or what is it to work in Mahindra's or in transportation business or automobile or uh, you know, uh, interiors and all of these. And then as I, you can make out to the left, well, in today's time and age, all our faculty members have done their masters. Of course, many of them have done international masters. And many of them, because now we are a university, are also in the process of doing their research and PhDs. So you have a combination of teaching teachers who are really the ones who you will be very close to, who will teach you and who have industry experience. And they will also be senior faculty who are currently creating new content and new knowledge through research that they do. So that is a broad array. Uh, I think we can go on these slides faster because, uh, okay, since we've already seen a video, but these are some photographs of what the interiors and what the space looks like. Well, we are a university or a design school without any walls. So it's fairly transparent. You can look across your classroom and you can look at the augmented reality, virtual reality lab, or you could look at possibly the metal cutting and wood cutting facility. And none of these are sectioned as departments, right? So you can actually walk in, evaluate in the AR, VR lab, you could be a communication design student, but you could also be a filmmaking student. And remember, as a school of innovation, you do want to celebrate this collaboration. It's only when different intelligences come together, something like Eureka happens, right? Which is something that you hadn't thought of and somebody the other person hadn't thought of. So very collaborative and the space itself celebrates that collaboration. Uh, well, these are pictures that were taken during uh, uh, the times the students weren't on the campus, but it's a good way to at least look at what the space looks like and what to expect of the infrastructure uh, in Bombay. So those are the li that's the library, the uh, Mac lab, you can see make out that's a film facility, you can see some of the posters on the wall, uh, the 3D printers, much of what a world-class design school should have. Um, there's, of course, uh, you did see in the video, the turf and the play facility. We've got a canteen on the, in the building, but there's also a, a cafeteria in the premises for you to have sort of, you know, sort of multiple types of cuisines. Uh, there is a clinic uh, in the premises. There's also 24 into seven ambulance just in case. So these are some of the other pictures of the uh, campus. Living in Mumbai, I think living Comfortably in Mumbai is just as important as the reason you come to Mumbai, which is study. And I think they are linked. And uh, we've got, uh, again, it's a world-class living facility here in Mumbai. Uh, the, there are various, there are about three types of hostels now, depending on, you, know, and you can look at one of them, depending on your budget. But they're just run just as comfortably. The difference being that you may be sharing your room with two people or you may be, or, and it may be a housing or an apartment like situation where you've got a full house to yourself or you may be living in a hostel like arrangement where you are, you've got a room to yourself but not that entire apartment. Just some pictures of what you should expect in terms of interiors and these are completely furnished. Uh, student experience, just the, uh, well, I'm not the best person to be talking about student experience. I wish it were a student talking about a student experience but I'll try and do some justice. Um, so that's, uh, well, uh, students get together to plan their immersion trips. 70% of the children who come to Mumbai uh, apply from cities outside of Bombay or even Maharashtra. And so the city may be new to them. You want to figure out how to travel around the city. How do you get on a train? How do you even get off a train maybe? And I think it helps to have a buddy, someone who's just one year your senior and can help you navigate around the city or tell you those little things that you need to know. Uh, because of the international program, a very large number of students, uh, international students are on the campus at any one point. And so we, uh, we, we want to play the best hosts or hostesses for, for our uh, receiving students from international universities and the student council plays an important role in that. There's also a very active students council who are actually the decision making body for, for many, many things, right? And fairly democratic to that extent. Of course, for students who've taken the ISD challenge this year or uh, may have taken, uh, uh, the interviews have happened online. 
But pre-COVID, we had situations where students from the interview council would actually be sitting on the interview council as uh, council members would be on the interview panel as well. So that's just how democratic and flat we are. And in many ways, students run the university and the school. <clears throat> uh, clubs, uh, an exciting space to be. There are roughly about 18 very active clubs uh, because it's Bombay. There are at least three or four dance clubs, music, photography, uh, trekking. There's also Himalayan uh, uh, mountaineering club. Um, there's a filmmaking club, entrepreneurship, culinary, sports itself has two or three clubs. We can keep rolling everything. Uh, there's also a girls football team, for instance, and they're right here. So if you have other vocations that you pursue, you should consider these clubs. And if there's a certain uh, activity that you are engaged in and the club does not exist, well, you can start your own. Uh, these are some of the international events uh, and international trips that happen pretty much every year. So these are short term. This is at Arts University Burnmouth in UK, which does a very uh, beautiful and engaging summer, 15-day uh, summer program for our students. And many of you would like to possibly exercise this opportunity to, to spend a summer in uh, Arts University Parliament. I'm going to go a little faster now. So these are some of the other opportunities. I'm particularly fond of one or two of these. I'll talk about it. Royal College of Art, which is rated as the world's number one school for doing masters. And what we do with them is, uh, or rather what we've done with them in the past is a peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunity where their senior students teach our younger ones. And well, you know, Dion, there's a zillion ways to learn and to teach. But what I find very exciting is when you're learning from someone who's just two or three old years older than you, that learning is very special in its own way. And this, this RCA model is really that one. The one that you see beneath where they're holding these bags that say ABC is another all-time favorite of mine where... This project is called Imagining Tomorrow. It happens in the Netherlands every January and roughly about 25 to 30 students across different specializations at ISD would go there. And these are six countries that participate every year. And they're looking at one of the challenges of the future that they want to solve as a global community and not just a standalone design school in India. And so six countries come together. They do a lot of work before they go and they present and co-present to each other. And it's an immense amount of learning and at some point, we will host it in India. Uh, but this is the one that happens every year in the Netherlands in a city called Utrecht. And likewise, you can see our uh, students in Paris and other parts of the world for shorter immersion programs. I saw in the beginning, uh, Dion, you had a slide that also specifically talked about fashion schools. And I'm assuming because a lot of the students are possibly interested in the fashion program. Uh, well, there are opportunities while you're part of our fashion school. Mumbai itself is a fashion capital, uh, thanks to Bollywood, thanks to television, thanks to television production, Netflix productions, or various other kinds of uh, you know, screen production programs. But having said so, it's a good idea to also have some visibility to fashion weeks across the globe. Um, there will be opportunities. In one of these pictures, you can say it says February 2022. So this is just before COVID struck while the students went to participate not just attend, but participate in by way of being backstage helpers, by way of assisting designers present their collection on the ramp. The New York Fashion Week, the next slide talks about the London Fashion Week, which also, and every year there is a spring, summer, and there's a fall, winter. So you could possibly attend one of these. And as I said earlier, these are not just attending, but also participating. You can see students helping the models dress, queuing up, getting the models across, putting the garments back on the ramp, and also attending how a sales order is executed after a, after a show is over. Because what we see normally is what happens on the ramp. But after the show is over, the job of the designer and his team is to garner the orders and, and be able to supply these kind of garments across the globe. So you go through the full process on what it is to be like an international designer and, and really showcase on an international platform. But for many, next slide, for the many, uh, you know, if you don't get an opportunity to go to attend the New York Fashion Week or the London Fashion Week, Mumbai itself does two fashion weeks every year and right across the road from where we've been all this while. So here is your opportunity to also attend the Mumbai Fashion Week. I think our international chapters will continue because uh, I may have loaded a little more of our international opportunity because today's students do look at all of these and also that's part of my portfolio. So kindly bear with me, but you will see a lot of international exchange programs in several slides. Next one. 
uh one of the things that is happening now a lot of students are planning and even parents have begun to plan the next step after an undergraduate course and so on finishing four years some of you may want to uh maybe it's a little early to have this conversation but you may consider doing a masters i do get a lot of questions about should we do masters right after undergrad should we work two years in india and then do a masters of course there are different answers for different situations but students do both uh we've got an agreement with some of the leading universities across the globe and you can see some of them these predominantly are the british universities but there are as many american universities that you could possibly go and study and do your masters in and one of the things that i can promise you as a student who would have studied in isd is we'll try and get you the best possible scholarships uh for masters when you go to international universities of course you have to promise me a killer of a portfolio the rest is for us to do next one a couple of our mous with various universities across the globe okay and i think now as we come towards the end of my presentation and uh, this is about jobs and placements and careers so let's talk about our industry connect one of the things is of course you must be meet the people who will motivate you inspire you touch your lives and at any point uh, there are several visitors from different um i would say parts of the industry parts of the society they are industrialists uh, there are uh, people like uh, the one that you see on the screen uh, there are people who are from uh, industry there are people who have run ngos and they'll come and motivate you they'll talk to you and everybody from the university gets together to listen to them and in many ways remember there are some things they leave with, with you as thoughts that will become a reality even much after you've graduated from your school i still remember Kiran Bedi coming and addressing us at some point and TN session and every bit of what they said back then, uh, you know, remains etched in our memory. So please meet and interact with them as often as they come. Uh, so these are a couple of our what is called stalwart series. Every Wednesday you will have what is called the stalwart series where you get to interact with a biggie from the industry and as I said, they'll touch your lives, motivate you, move you in ways you can't even imagine. a um, couple of these are all from the stalwart series the people you probably recognize and uh, of know of oh wow this is such a project it is so dear to my heart but i'm only going to take dion's permission and how i'm doing with time dion and whether i'm being very repetitive no worries no worries you can you can okay. this is that. a project which i really want to talk about because this is the magic of design right dion there's a subject that students study in the first year which is called sustainable systems and it's not sustainability It's sustainable systems. You know, often when we think of design, we think of that pretty perfume bottle in a duty-free shop or a possibly a beautifully packaged chocolate or something. Is design luxury or is design meant for you and me or is design meant for the last man on the road? If somebody sitting on the thirtieth floor of an apartment of Mumbai on a wheelchair needs to get to Churchgate Station, how does he come come down this building and how does he go to? Uh, a railway station how does he board a train how does he disembark a train and how does he go to his office if our roads if our um, homes if our lifts if our railway stations aren't designed for the last man then clearly there is that much opportunity for design to percolate into this country right and it is maybe slow but it clearly is look at the interest in design and this is a subject that the students study which is called sustainable systems which is to sometimes go out of the comfort of your air conditioned classrooms and work for sections of society that need design and it is to open your eyes to what you could do as a designer in addressing some needs that you are probably not aware of when you're sitting in the comfort of your own space and so the students went and worked with bnc schools now bnc schools uh, dion are brihan mumbai mahanagar palika school right and needless to say in a country like ours we all want to go to swanky schools right we don't want to go to school which sounds like a electricity board of india right you want to go to a xavier's delhi public school and at possibly an english medium school because so much of our uh, jobs are related to being to to get to being able to speak in english and learn english early on so our students went to work with bmc schools and one of the things they realized is they needed to bring in a sense of energy a sense of motivation a sense of pride amongst children who were going to these bmc schools and they said let's redesign the uniform let's redesign the classrooms let's you know uh, dion if you remember when we were in, when you were younger uh, all of us at some point you know the 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 high we got when we got our new notebooks 
new labels. We covered our notebook. We even smelled our books. They just felt so nice, right? We didn't a new stationery, um, a new bag, water bottle, everything, right? And so they said, let's let's bring all of that for these kids. They did that. But they realized that till we also make these schools, we change the logo. You can see the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika has an all new logo, which says Mumbai Public Schools. Fairly modern, maybe it reminds you in many ways of a Delhi public school, right? And they said, not only will we do this, but we are going to try and convince the state government to make them into an English medium school, right? So they get an absolute fully liberated into a sort of a free way of being and learn a language that will open even more doors for them. And the government of Maharashtra was so kind as to have uh, uh, commission these schools. These are have now changed from Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika School to Mumbai Public Schools. They are English medium schools, and in many ways will change the fate of the state into even better ways of uh, creating employability. And you can see the smile on the child's face. I think it says it all. Right? There's such pride in going to these schools. Happy to report that uh, the school received unprecedented applications even during COVID after they transitioned. If, and I, as a subject, I would call it corporate identity after the transition from a BMC to a Mumbai public school format, not just in its logo, but even in its soul and in its ethos. And this is all triggered by our first year students. And of course, with the blessings of the government. Um, and of course, this project led to yet another when the government awarded a yet another project and said, let's redesign Maharashtra Tourism Development Corporation. And the students came with this fantastic logo. If you go to MTDC logo, the erstwhile logo had Ajanta Elora caves in it. This is the new logo of our state for our tourism development. Of course, it will remind you of the turban of Shivaji Maharaj or here a coastal city, right? So it will probably remind you of the hull of a ship and all of that. There's a beautiful movie around this, which I'm now not going to show, maybe at another point. So this is the power of design, right? And how we can change the identity of uh, a logo of a state or even uh, build in a sense of huge amount of pride amongst young people and change lives forever. Um, all right, internships and placements, the last section, I think. Well, placement is a journey, right? And therefore, you must go over it over uh, four years. And I did talk about internships and apprenticeships and, and capstones. Some of our partners that we've worked very closely with over the last four years, with many of them, we've got signed agreements. Uh, we are ranked as a tier one school. And a tier one school pretty much means that it is a school of choice for employers. So a tier one school is the school that many potential employers will actually come to first. Uh, how does a school or a design school become a tier one? A, when our students have uh, the um, ability to solve complex problems, not just design, but also technology, not just technology, but also business, not just business, but also strategy. And so the students, when they come to design, they will undergo learnings in design, technology, business, strategy. So they're complete people. We are not just here to make young people who can talk about design, but we want these people to be sitting in boardrooms advising uh, a larger section of people on how design can be used very powerfully into taking business decisions as well. So, um, and of course, the compensations are higher when uh, you get ranked as a tier one school. Uh, many of these companies do rank and wherever there's a ranking, be it consistently ranked as a tier one school. So that's good news. Uh, Corporate Connect is an opportunity or Career Connect is an opportunity that is available to students every December when we call a large plethora of our industry partners for making an offer for employment. You can see in the pictures beneath, you can see many, many companies. These actually are from the communication design department. I think Leaf Design, I can see, I can see Krunal from Lando. That was also a communication advertising firm. So you can see the potential employers are having a look at the portfolios of the students on their laptops uh, to be able to eventually advise them, guide them, and make final placement offers. Uh, also, over the last few years, we've received uh, these are the companies that have come for what is called zero day placement. Now, zero day placement beyond was something we only heard in business schools, right? ABC company going to IM Ahmedabad for a zero day, wanted to be the first ones to hire from. Look at this, right? I mean, look at these companies, Infosys, TCS, Arsene and Tubro, Infotech, HCL. This year it was Deloitte, Philips, all of whom have over uh, in the past come to us for what is called a zero day placement. That means they were the first ones to want to hire for, from, from us. Uh, so this year was Deloitte. And uh, just a quick story on Deloitte. They came to us for the very first time last year. 
and picked up five students, right? And Deloitte, uh, this business of Deloitte in India is new. It's about three years old. So they took five students in 2021. And I'm sure these guys did demonstrated impeccable qualities and skills and abilities and also managerial abilities. This year, Deloitte came and they came for zero day. They were the first ones to come. And this present, the one, the poster to the right says 15 students, but they actually took more. So it's 19 students eventually. Uh, who joined Deloitte and four times the number from their initial hiring last year uh, in different locations, Bangalore, uh, in uh, Mumbai, Pune as well, I think. So these are the students who, who will be joining them soon and uh, or may have joined. Infosys has been a consistently coming to us uh, over the last five years. I'm just showing two years juxtaposed here. Uh, then we've got TCS, which is another big hire for us and uh, consistently, again, five students last year, eight or is it 10 this year? So in most cases, uh, you'll see the numbers have doubled. Uh, Larson and Tubro, of course, I'm presenting technology firms largely here, which is a combination of product and communication, communication and strategic design courses, because hirings there are in slightly larger numbers. If you're going to an Anita Dongre or a Sabde Saatchi, they would hire fewer students, but of course, consistently higher. Okay, uh, some of our internships and placements um, uh, in more recent times. And okay, fair, I think we, it's okay to show the fee. We, we, no, 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 nothing wrong with it. Okay, so that, of course, is our uh, probably the last slide. Uh, I think we've got scholarships after this. What is it? Uh, what is the tuition fee at ISD? Well, a little under six lakhs, as you can see, uh, 577 is the exact amount. Uh, that's a first year fee. And there's also a one-time enrollment fee of 75,000 rupees. So this is how you could plan yourself. There are scholarships and there are some very promising scholarships at Atlas and at SD. Uh, if, you, uh, if you are meritorious, which means you are a high academic achiever, you've consistently done well from 9th until 12th, you can apply for a merit scholarship. A very new scholarship, which is as new as a printout on with me, is the TAS, the Atlas uh, uh, scholarships. And the TAS, uh, Dion, is a very special scholarship where we are looking at uh, a few really bright diamonds across the country that we can, and, and this will support everything from their tuition, accommodation, logistics, even travel, even um, initial uh, sort of uh, settling fee into Mumbai. And this is a complete scholarship that goes beyond tuition fee, but also living and other things. Uh, of course, there are very few such scholarships and it's yet to be launched, but keep your eyes open for this. The other one, of course, is the standard merit scholarship that we award to students who are high academic achievers. Uh, the need-based financial assistance is offered to families where, or to children uh, who come from families where uh, the family may not be able to uh, support this education of four years uh, if they did not get financial assistance from us. For children whose parents have served or are serving in the Indian Army, in Navy, Air Force, or any of the um, armed forces or even territorial arms, you can apply for the defense scholarship. And there is a very special scholarship called the educator scholarship, which is awarded to children where parents or parent may be a teacher, really where the significant uh, uh, income of the family comes through teaching. And so between the one that I just talked to you about right here, uh, between the merit scholarship, between the need-based financial assistance, between defense scholarship, educators. And yes, there is a last one, which is not on my slide, which is culture and sports, right? So if you are representing India in, in, uh, at nationals or, and, and beyond, then obviously you're also eligible for the culture and sports scholarships. So I think that really is my last slide. I quickly covered all aspects of ISD. Happy to take your questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, it was a brilliant, uh, I think very detailed, covered a lot of aspects of this. So if anyone has questions, please feel free to ask this right now. Um, Hi. This is Sridhar here. Hi, Sridhar. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, see, you did mention initially about certification from part. Uh, Parsons College in New York, right? Mm -hmm. Do you still have it? I heard that, I mean, now you give your own degree from Atlas University, four-year B design degree, Bachelor of Design degree. Get it. And do you still get a certification? That's right. So the program is that of, uh, the program that we've been offering all this while is the Parsons curriculum. However, the degree uh, is 
well, in India, you can offer an Indian degree. And uh, the Atlas is the university. We are a state private university. So the degree will come from Atlas. Whereas the curriculum and the certification comes from Parsons. So you still get two of them. One is degree, other is certification. Correct. Correct. That's right. And I have one more question, madam. Of course, um, please go ahead. About the, uh, about the uh, 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 accommodation for my, my, my daughter, Samyukta. She's, she got the admission in ISDI. Uh, so how is the accommodation? Is it a college-owned accommodation? Is it a private accommodation which you have a tie-up? We've got an arrangement with one of India's largest student housing companies called Your Space. We've been working with them for now uh, over five years. But it's not that they, I mean, uh, in all communication, all of us would be marked. So I'm as much part of, or many of my colleagues are as much part of uh, running of the hostel. In fact, uh, to an outsider, it may pretty much, I mean, you may not even know the distinction. So having said so, um, they run it. Uh, you pay the fee, uh, the hostel fee directly to them. But in terms of decisions down to what time should be the cutoff time, what menu, Okay. Even, that, that's I'm not, really, not, a, not that kind of details. I mean, yeah. I mean, no, one thing is involved, the, the really proximity, involved. proximity to the university. How, how uh, close it are, is? Yeah. So there are three. Currently, I've got two hospitals for girls, and there will be a third one soon. Uh, so these are anywhere between about a kilometer and a half to the farthest we one being at about three three kilometers. Uh, okay, that that's good to know. So the one which you showed in the video is a, is it a new facility of? Uh, ISDI? Yeah, everything that, yeah, the video that you saw was the new facility. That's right. That's what people will study. Yeah. And that's what, okay, they will be studying. Okay. And just one more thing you haven't, I mean, uh, when you showed the placement and all these things, they look more towards uh, media communication design. My, my daughter is joined for fashion design and design. Mm -hmm. So, how is that placement and how is the industry touch for that uh, fashion design side? Okay, great. Thank you for your question. And uh, yes, you're right, because I was in, in, a, in a format like this, I try and cover volume. So I showed uh, those kind of slides. Uh, see, Mumbai is a fashion capital and the four or five uh, business uh, divisions in fashion. So I think we are very big in Mumbai for retail. We are actually a retail capital of sorts because whether you look at West Side, Shoppers Top, Lifestyle, Pantaloons, all of them are headquartered here in Mumbai. And again, within them, there are men's wear, women's wear, children's wear, accessories, uh, lifestyle, which is perfumes and all of that as you, as you enter the store, the first set of things that you see. So uh, one of the big spaces in which students work, whether they work in men's wear, women's wear, children's wear, sports, Indian apparel, Western apparel, all of that is the retail. And that's huge. That's very large. The other one uh, is, of course, the... Uh, the pure design studio format where the young people work with designers initially on before and they learn the tricks and nuances of what it is to have an independent uh, business your own. So whether it is houses like that of uh, design houses like Aza or we've got a couple of students who worked with uh, Sabe Sachi, one of the favorite designers, many of them like to work and have worked or are working with Masaba Gupta or Anita Dongre. So uh, there are individual designers there are, there's retail. Now there's a very large space that has emerged, which is the online retail, which all of us are familiar with. So whether it's a shoppers or a lifestyle, many of them have their online retail business as well, or standalone retail online businesses as well. So that's the third space. The fourth space, which is also very exciting uh, for students uh, in, uh, in Bombay, is the publications, the editorial, the magazines, the L, the Harper's Bazaar, the Vogue, many of our students are and are, even as I speak with you are at fairly senior positions in, in for instance at L or even Harper's, Grazia, Condé Nast or your leading five or six magazines that really give you the direction of international fashion. Uh, the sixth one uh, which is again in many ways that Bombay sort of leads uh, rules the roost is your is your film and television industry which creates an ample amount of employment in the styling space in the design space uh, or the entertainment industry because so much of what gets produced or uh, the media that uh, consumption is all happening here in Mumbai. I'm not even talking about television and other industries. So um, broadly, these are the five or six uh, broad businesses or pathways in which 
fashion students or fashion communication and styling students work and yes um, uh, it is in mumbai is a fashion capital for retail for editorial for magazines for film for television for online businesses and of course it is definitely a styling capital i think nearly all jobs in styling get created in the city so those are what you should expect uh, if your child is getting into uh, fashion design or fashion communication and styling or even luxury Thank you very much. Yeah, that helps. Thank you, Mr. Shridhar, for your questions. We'll just take a, a a few questions from few more people here. This Abhinav Shivastava, who's uh, uh, who's asking a, a question regarding the entrance process. Is there an entrance test, or is it only a portfolio requirement? So. um many of you have taken a cycle 1 cycle 2 now we are doing our last and the third cycle which uh, is the only one you can possibly apply it to but i can see many i can very familiar faces and names so many of them have actually gone through the challenge and i'm not sure if one of them wants to volunteer to answer that question uh but i can answer this so yes there is uh, an examination uh, dion it is called the isd challenge and the idea really is to challenge yourself so you're not competing with someone else but you're really competing with yourself uh, there are three sections uh, after you've applied uh, the first section is you submit your portfolio and i'm sure many of you who are students of gq lab have one if there is anyone here who doesn't uh, then you must consider doing a design project which is uh, which is equally in depth but it probably you can do it in a shorter time if you don't already have a portfolio of course the first choice is to have a portfolio so first submit your portfolios you will then be invited to take a design aptitude test which is a 60 minutes um, online examination uh, which has four or five sections on analytical thinking on critical thinking on storytelling uh, and general awareness so take the design aptitude test which is of 100 marks the weightage given to this section is 30% the weightage given to portfolio is 40% and finally you will be invited to have an interaction with uh, one of our faculty members uh, you could call it an interview and that also has about 30% weightage so these are the three sections portfolio design aptitude test and an interview and you could take this over a period of time right so you don't have to do it all on one day you can upload your portfolio take your dat and thereafter uh, you'll be invited for an interaction All right. Thanks for that, Bulbul. And uh, just just so you know, if you all are interested, there's a listing of ISTI on DQ Edge, and there's an application form link here, which takes you directly to the college application page. All right. So I thought I'll share that with you. Um, right. A couple of more questions. Uh, so Abhinav, hope that's answered your question clearly. um the question by vikas mangal who's asking is this school provided transport facility for uh, commute to and fro to the hostel we've just moved location dion so from some place where uh, there wasn't one but uh, of course this is something that is doable in fact i have uh, spoken to parents this year see in mumbai six months it rains right and even if the distances are short uh, it's it's definitely convenient to have your own uh, commute not only for the hostel we are thinking of running a bus service also for students from mumbai so yes you can be as long as you promise to take the bus yeah I that's what i was thinking taking the bus right <laughs> that's that's my only request yes we will do a bus service right so shri uh, rama is asking a question about the boys hostel is there a hostel facility for boys yeah. as well so i will have one as i speak with you uh, we got um, what is called service apartment for boys and that's why i didn't use the word hostel consciously uh, but yes by the time you come we will have a boys hostel as well so the oh. service apartments dion looks exactly if you look at the interiors if you look at everything they look just the same as anything else that you've seen so far the only difference is right now in the service apartment my neighbor may not be an isd student so it could be a housing society and i've taken couple of these apartments but by the time uh, the students will come i will uh, have a boys hostel as well all right thank you for that uh purvi is asking other than the fees what are the costs should i look forward to like the cost for the exchange programs excursion maybe materials what what are the type of costs here 
So, so as I always say, there are uh, four costs that you should be mindful of. The first is the tuition fee, and we have some sense of the tuition. I just presented it a while back. The second one, Dion, is um, which is uh, for students who are coming from outside of Mumbai. Then we need to be mindful of stay, and I, you know, living in Mumbai, and uh, that will cost you depending on the type of accommodation that you take through us uh, between two to three lakhs per annum. Uh, well, you could look at cheaper accommodation, but I would advise you to live comfortably and eat well. So uh, that's about two to three per annum, uh, depending on the comfort with which you want to live or how expansive you want to be and how close you want to be. So if you're taking our accommodation, that's how it would be. The, those are your two major costs. The third one uh, is your laptop. And of course, we will advise you on the configuration, but between possibly 50 to 80,000, depending on the kind of laptop that you invest in. Many of you may have one right away, actually. And I'm sure many of you do, but I just want to inform you that that is one investment that you should be mindful of. And the fourth one, Dion, which is optional, the first three are more or less mandatory. The fourth one, which is optional, is any kind of travel. Right now, whether you're going on an exchange program, domestic trips, international trips, to give you an idea of what it will cost you to do an international travel, again, it depends on a student exchange program. It will again depend on which city you're going to. So if you're going to a city like London for six months, it will be expensive. It will be almost a lakh a month, nothing less. But if you're going to a city like Berlin in Germany, it will be significantly lower. So, But that's what you pay because you're paying for your tra uh, living there, food, again, the kind of accommodation that you take over there. Um, uh, food is more or less standard. So uh, on the higher side, a city like London would be about a lakh a month uh, to possibly about possibly about 60,000 per month between your food and accommodation in a, on a very smaller European or a European city. So that is how you should plan your international exchange. Um, domestic uh, travel, all of you are familiar with what it costs, right? So depending on how you're traveling and how soon you book your tickets, et cetera. All right. Uh, so what about the, the material? Sorry. Yeah, material. the material cost, yeah. You know what, uh, Rion, I think material cost was significant during our time because there wasn't something called a, a laptop and all submissions were printouts and one color printout would cost you like 100 bucks or more and you always wondered how can I minimize. I think today majority of your submissions are happening in on uh, soft versions and so I think the laptop or the Software has pretty much cover the cost of all your submissions. Uh, minimal. I don't think that's something you need to plan. Uh, even if you're making, a, you know, in fashion design, if you're making clothes, most of them are made in muslin. Muslin is uh, hard, sort of a hardened canvas or unhardened canvas. So these are 18 rupees a meter. And uh, you know, even if you're making an ostentatious evening gown of 10 meters, end up spending about 200 rupees and needle and thread. And those are minimal costs. I don't think you need to consider those as much as long as you're investing in a good lap, uh, laptop, uh, certain softwares, uh, that will more or less cover. I don't, I mean, I can't think of a significant cost on consumables for students. Fair enough. Uh, Tia Patel is asking, is there a particular criteria for students who wish to apply for international exchange programs? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, resilience, good attitude. You are going to be representing the country in another country. Everything that Tia is for someone in that country is India, right? So I think more than anything else, as you're going as an ambassador of the country, so be on top of your game. Uh, it's not meant for somebody who's an academic topper or something. No, it's meant for everyone. So, but be top of your game, manage life well, be in control of your time. You're going to another country, so the challenges may be different, and maybe in certain cases they amplify, right? Life can be a little bit tougher there because you may even have to cook yourself. So as long as you, you, you're willing to take on that, uh, also sometimes the weather can be very different if you're going in December to a cold country. So that's also something you're dealing with. So I think resilience and attitude, and of course, be on top of your game. You know, if you're turning in your submissions on time, I'm not saying be topping everything, no. But I'm saying just make sure that your, your life is in your control. So that means you're in another country and you will be in control as well. Those are the things we are looking for. I've never had to say no to anyone who has applied for exchange so far. So, All right. Thanks for that. Uh, so Jay Yadav is asking on YouTube, what are the scholarships available? We've covered that. 
in case you need any further clarity, please feel free to ask and, and we'll moderate the question in. Um, Kiran Kaman <laughs> is asking, how about art materials? Are these available for use at the college itself? I heard that art, that professional art materials are pretty expensive. You know, these days, Dion, by the time the students come to us, many of them do have their stedlers and color pencils and uh, uh, paint brushes. And so, no, they aren't very expensive. These are one-time investments. Uh, uh, and if you invest in a good, good color pencil set and all of that, they will last you very, very long, very, very long. Um, so uh, these are not, uh, they are no longer as expensive as they used to be. Uh, in fact, the cost of much of this hasn't changed ever since I was a student, Dion. So, so having said so, uh, I find that majority of the students do have their color pencils, uh, you know, or water soluble color pencils, uh, paint brushes if you use wet medium. Um, they are, and they're not like you're buying them very often, right? If you're in fashion design, you may end up buying a set of scales like the hip square or the French curve and all of that. But they're not very expensive. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking how much is it? I mean, a color pencil set of Stedler set of 24 would be how much? Maybe 600, 800? I don't know. Yeah, maybe, yeah in that range, it goes on maybe 800,000 in that range. Around, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and sometimes when you buy through the school, then you will get student discounts as well. Right. So uh, I think that's about it. I'm not seeing any more questions. Uh, maybe we can have the last couple of questions and if people uh, have any. I have one follow-up question and yeah. Pierre Mother here on yeah. the international exchange program. So suppose uh, uh, there are hundred students who apply for it. All the hundred get qualified or is there a limit uh, about how many students you can send? Uh, Mrs. Patel, is that right? Yes. Okay, hi, thank you for your question and uh, absolutely valid. So um, we've, like I said, we've not reached a stage when we've had to decline uh, uh, in exchange to anybody, but it's how many would we have sent so far? A fair number because the student goes twice in a year. They go in September uh, and they go for September to January term. And then there's yet another opportunity, which is February uh, to May. So there are two windows for every student to go. And of course, an exchange opportunity is available to student once. Okay, so oh, okay. we do have the students to go twice. Yeah, because, and by the way, <coughs> you can extend an exchange to up to one year. So you can go for a minimum of six months, but in most cases, you can extend it to one year as well. So having said that, uh, there will be at least uh, for every batch of students, there'll be four windows to go, which is, mostly in the third year, but also in the second year. So I would think that uh, majority of the students will get an opportunity across two years. Only thing is exchange programs are not offered in the first year and not offered in the fourth year at all, because the idea of exchange is really in the middle of the tenure of your program. So the, um, currently, we uh, during COVID years, of course, the numbers were very different. But I'm hoping this September, to send roughly about 30 to 40 students on an exchange and roughly about 30 to 40 in January again. So that should give you an idea of what is the number of students or opportunities available. We are also working quite aggressively with universities to expand the network of our exchange universities. But only thing this is, Patel, we have to be mindful of two things before we send our students. A, it should be a highly ranked university and B, it should be an English taught university. Right? Because if I'm sending you, so those are the two filters that uh, we, and we are hoping to sign a few more agreements in the next few months. So those are the number of opportunities you should expect. And what happens to, uh, to the students, say, suppose uh, they go for six months, they mm -hmm. would have lost on the curriculum being taught here, right? When they come back, will they have to make up for it? Or is it the same thing that's being taught there? No. Well? So obviously we've mapped our curriculum to the universities that they go to. And likewise, when we receive the students from that university, they have also mapped their curriculum. Yes. So you, so they you don't, don't have actually don't... missed out on anything. No, that's why you're going for exchange, right? Because you are now, and that is why it takes time to sign these agreements because you A, agree that yes, we are both good universities and we want to have the exchange. And then you say, all right, now I want to map my curriculum to yours to see whether it's aligned and whether the credits are aligned and the teaching intensity is aligned and whether the curriculum is aligned. And even if it's not a 100% match, as long as there's a 90% 90, 90 match, it's a good match. And by the way, 
if there's not a hundred percent match, it's fine. After all, you're also going for that ten percent mismatch, right? That's mm-hmm. the diversity you're signing up for. Mm-hmm. So uh, yes, uh, they, they they're not missing out. In fact, they're completing, and that credits or the mark sheet of or the transcripts of that semester will be awarded by the university you go to. And likewise, the student we receive also gets the mark sheets of that particular semester from us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for explaining. I'm sure for all of us as parents, these are the times to have been student, isn't it? Such opportunity <laughs> yeah. that never existed. Yes. Yeah. And, and the good news is, for much of Europe, I think India is emerging as really, really a country that they want to promote even to their students. So I'm equally excited about internationalization in India. I think it's time we had Europeans and other countries coming to us now. Phenomenal. Right, so um, I'm guessing there's no more questions, and we're also, you know, gone beyond the time limit. So, um, so right, so Bulbul, thank you so much to you and the team for being here and 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 going around with this, uh, answering all the questions so patiently. Um, I think a lot of clarity has come out <coughs> through everything, and uh, for sure, we we you know from a DQ Labs point of view, we do see. Uh, ISDI is, is definitely one of the top in India uh, and we would definitely recommend students to join there, right? Uh, thanks so much for everything and uh, looking forward to have more interactions with you in future. Yep. Thanks, Dion, and best wishes to all the young ones and the parents. All right. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.